Yo, what's good, John? In today's video, I'm about to show you guys how to make a manual save um, type of system, like data store system, or like, I know you guys have seen, um, like, old Tycoon games and stuff. I don't know, I'm not really sure, I don't, honestly, I only put, like, really two or three games in Roblox, and they're not Tycoon games, so I'm not really sure, but, um, I know you guys have seen games where, like, you see, there would be, like, a save button on the left, you click save, and then it would t let you know your data save and stuff. Now, obviously, majority of games use an automatic saving system, as that's just easier and stuff, you know, to use. But some games might want to use manual save for certain things and stuff. So I'm going to show you guys how to use a manual, like how to make a manual data store save system, right? Don't worry, there will be a cooldown and stuff to prevent people from like uh, spamming as well as measures in place to make sure that uh, data is saved. And if it's not saved, it will inform the player that, uh, that, that was it called? Damn, I'm trying to think. That either it's working, that it has worked, or it has failed, right? I was, I'm not gonna lie with y'all, usually I practice, like I make sure, I can type everything out and make sure I have it right, so I just call it rehearsal, I just know that, like, what I'm doing. Now, I've done this before, like, because I like to test and experiment with a lot of things and stuff, but I haven't actually, like, I haven't done it in like a few weeks, so we're gonna hope for the best, but anyway, first things first, of course, we're gonna need a GUI, just a little button, not too much, not too much, you feel what I'm saying? We're gonna make, we're gonna call it our save GUI. And of course, we're gonna insert a text button, right? Put it like right here. We'll call it our save button. Save button, right? Then we are going to have it. Let's make the color. Um, let's make the color. Hmm, I'm trying to think. What's the color of a save button? I think green, you know? Because, I don't know, when I think save, I think green. But yes. Save. Right? Rich, bold, the text. I don't know. Make it like a, I don't know, yellow, you know? Then, yeah, I like that, I like that. You feel me? All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to insert a local script, right? I'm literally like, I'm just thinking all this as we go along. Not gonna let you go. Okay, so we'll call this save script local. Right, uh -huh. eh, yeah, we'll call it local. Right, let's go ahead and make a remote event, like so instead of remote event to replicate a storage, and we'll call this remote event save event. Right, so let's first, let's first put in place the cooldown. Right, so well, let's do this. Right. Mm, let's see. Let's do local save events is equal to game that replicate storage because for of course we have to get the remote event first, right? Save event, right? So what we'll do is this. We'll do script dot parent. Must well click connect function. Close parentheses and boom, right? And then what we'll do is we'll do save events fire server, right? Then we'll do um script dot disabled is equal to true. We'll do wait um you got this is up to you guys for however long you want you want to make this uh stuff it is completely up to y'all uh um I guess we'll say five seconds just for the sake of the video right then we'll do script dot disabled is equal to false right. So change the wait time to however long you want it to be disabled for after they click it, right? Pretty much if it's disabled, then obviously they can't, like clicking it won't do anything. The script pretty much, it's the equivalent to not being here if it's disabled, right? Like they literally can't do anything with it, right? So we'll do script dot disabled. I feel like I'm forgetting, look, I feel like I'm forgetting something. There was something I wanted to do, but I'm trying to remember. Oh yes, it's just the text, text, okay. Right, then let's change the text. Let's do script dot parent dot text is equal to on cooldown on cooldown right. Then when it uh re enables itself, we'll do script dot parent dot text save right. So you know it's off cooldown right. Or, I forgot the yeah there we go right. So we've we've done the save on local local side right. It'll fire the remote event. Then our cooldown is right here at the wait. So let's insert a server script into server script service because obviously to save data we obviously have to do it on the server side anyway, so it works out. So then we'll call it save script server. That is not server, okay. Server, right? 
of course, we'll need the save event variable. We can just control C after uh, highlighting it. Then control V over print hello world. Come down here, press enter twice, then do save event on server event, connect function. In parentheses, we'll do PLR, which is short for player, right? So what we will do is we will do this. Well, actually, we need a data store first. <laughs> Let's go up here, click enter. Um, you can have whatever data store you want. Uh, for the sake of the video, I'll just put a random one, I guess. I don't know. Uh, let's do local. I don't know. Local one, two, three data store. Oh, well, I can't do that. Um, local YouTube data store, right? Data store is equal to game get service data store service get data store YouTube data store, right? So then we'll do this, right? It's just an event. So once the remote event has been fired, then what we're gonna do is we're going to run a p-call, right? Like a protected call, right? We're gonna do, now I'm not sure if you guys know what this, uh, what p-call, if you've heard of it and stuff, it's an intermediate. This, I, I won't even argue or debate about if it's intermediate or beginner. This for sure is intermediate and stuff. Honestly, it took me a minute to understand, but once you understand this, it makes your script much more effective, especially when it comes to data saving. All right, so we're gonna do local, success comma error message is equal to p call function right then close parentheses enter right so okay so to kind of explain this this isn't a video explaining what p call is so i'm just make it very brief so, so you guys can understand how to edit this to your liking whatever you want this function to do when the person clicks the save button right when they click save you put in here between local success and the end with in the first end the top end with the parenthesis Right? I mean, yeah, yeah, parenthesis, yeah, parenthesis, right? You're gonna put that in here. So obviously we're trying to save that. So, um, it's not like they have, the thing is it's not like they really have that. Uh, there's, I mean, there's nothing really to save per se. Um, hmm. Let's see. You know what? Speaking of which, let's add. Let's do this. Enter twice. Let's add stats. All right. Let's do game dot players. Let's do this real quick. Player added connect function, PLR. Then we'll do local leader stats is equal to instance dot new folder parent it to the player which is PLR. Then do leader stats dot name is equal to leader stats. And here enter local Let's say cache, yeah, we'll just use cache instance dot new number value parented to leader stats, then do cache dot value is equal to zero, cache dot name is equal to cache, of course, right? And then obviously for loading data, um well I guess I'll show you guys how to do, I guess I'll show you how to use it for loading data as well. But yeah, so we come up here for loading data, right? So we'll do local success, comma error message is equal to pcal function same thing down there close parentheses enter right then what we'll do is we will actually we go up here and then let's make our key first local key is equal to player to user id you guys can change the key to whatever you want i just use i simply just use the player's user id i wouldn't recommend using the player's username as people change their usernames all the time so yeah i'd recommend using the user id as you can't change the user id so yeah so what we'll do is we will do YouTube data store, get async, and we'll put the key, right? Oh, this is, oh, sorry, this is supposed to be local data. Local data is equal, to, like I said, guys, I'm sorry. I'm literally doing this as I'm going along. I just wanted to record the video. I did not feel like having to do the prep before I I'm honestly hungry, so I just wanted to just do it as I go. Yeah, so this is our data, right? Get async, right? This is getting the specific player's data. Then we'll do is if data, pretty much saying if the data exists, then cache dot value is equal to data. Now I'm gonna put in um brackets one. One means this is the first save thing. I will explain this in a later video and stuff, but you could you could use data, but if you have multiple values saved, you want to be specific. So I'm gonna use one. It's just better practice to use to use specific uh things. So one right. And then we're gonna come down here to the outer part of end, right? Then what we're gonna do is while not success, which means if success fails pretty much, right? It'll keep doing this over and over again. You literally would just copy, you literally just copy and paste this, right? 
And then, of course, you would obviously put in a weight somewhere between here. Right? Because you want people's data to load, of course, right? You want it to keep retrying as getting data slash loading as well as saving data can fail. So, what's it called? We're going to go here. And then we're going to... Going, and then we're going to... Uh, what's it called? We're going to come down here. And then we're going to... I lost my chain of thought. I'm not going to lie to you. Oh, yes. Then we're going to save our data here by doing YouTube data store. You guys could use update async, but I'd, I honestly prefer using set async. I have heard that update async is better to use, but I'm going to just use set async for the video, right? So set async, right? Then, of course, we're going to need to get our key. So we can go down here. Enter. Do local key is equal to player.user ID. Then do set async key. And the value. Put special brackets here. Special brackets is how you separate different values, right? And then you separate it by commas, of course. So for the first value, well, the only value is player dot leader stats dot cash dot value, and that is how we're saving our cash, right? Then just like literally, just like up there, we're literally just copy and pasting what we did. While not success, do local key. Well, we could have key on the outside of it, but it doesn't really matter. Right, then we'll keep doing this, right? So to pretty much explain this, and of course put a wait, because it's, it's very important that you, it's very important that you make sure your wait time is good, because you don't want to overload the server and stuff. But yeah, now the whole point of this is while not successful, which means while, like if it fails, right? Because obviously it can only succeed or fail, right? Then it will continue to keep doing this over and over again until it succeeds, right? So we can go ahead and test this. Uh, By the way, uh. Make sure you like you, you guys see game settings up here. If I open the menu, you guys, I don't think you guys will see it. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't show up on your screen. But yeah, so to enable data storage, you would click game settings, right? Then you would go down to security. Then you would go down to enable studio access to API services and check that box and click save. But anyway, I'm gonna just publish. It's just sick of publishing, right? Then I'm gonna click play to show you guys already. Now it may be a little hard to test uh studio because studio like like say if you click stop studio server shut down studios like shuts down very, like much faster I learned this actually it shuts down much faster than normal uh normal games and stuff so what you can do to test is you can go on the server side then delete the player then then delete your player which pretty much kicks your player out of the game but the server is still running right because I'm pretty sure you guys have seen where like Roblox servers sometimes will have nobody in the server yet the server will still be running for a few extra seconds. The whole point for that is so that it can give extra time for things like data stores, things to save, right? But anyway, uh, if we click, well, now that I think about it, we click save, right? It'll go on cooldown, right? For five seconds, then boom, right? Click save. It's currently saving my data, right? We can go ahead and test this, right? Let's go on. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so to test this, right? Do not make sure this does not say current client when you do this, right? We're going to edit my value on the server side because changing on the client side will not save it, obviously. So we're going to go here, go to user stats, cash. We're going to give me, we're going to give myself 2,000 cash, right? You guys can see it there, 2,000 cash, right? Then we're going to go on the server side. We're going to delete my player. Well, actually, oh no, sorry, sorry. Not delete my player, sorry, not yet. We're going to click save, right? We're going to say on cooldown. We're going to wait. And, okay. Right. Then we're going to delete my player. Right. Obviously the player is gone. It's obviously there's no one here. The server's still up, but is this what's called my player is gone? Click stop. Click play. It should work. It should work. Let's hope. Let's pray. And there we go. It has worked. Just like I said, guys. But yeah, so that's how you make a manual save. Sorry for making this video so long, guys. But yeah, that's how you make a manual save and stuff. If you guys have any questions, leave it down in the comments down below. You can join my Discord for help. Links to join my Discord and Roblox group can be found in the description. Both scripts will be found in the description as well. And yeah, if this video was helpful, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys. Thank you guys for watching.